Tori Hope Peterson has a passion for foster care reform. She's a first-hand expert on the subject after growing up with a dozen different foster families. Between her mom's mental illness and living in 12 different foster homes, Tori Hope Peterson had anything but a stable childhood. A bright ray of hope came in the form of Tori's high school track coach. He became more like a father and demonstrated God's love to her. Tori wrote Fostered to share how she overcame her past and to offer hope to kids who desperately need it. Please welcome to the 700 Club, Tori Hope Peterson, the author of Fostered. What a remarkable book you've put together. Thank so nice you. to have you. Thank you so much. You went into foster care. You know, a lot of kids go in very early in life. You went in at the age of 13. And even at that point in your life, Tori, you were in 12 different foster homes. What caused you to finally at 13 be placed in the foster care system? My mom, as I got older, her mental illness just continued to get worse, and that caused a lot of abuse mm -hmm. in our home. And so that led me and my sister, who is 10 years younger than me, to enter the foster care system, and that was for the second time. Yeah. And you did you enter together, or you were placed? Yeah, we um, entered our first foster home together, and I honestly thought that this is an opportunity for us to have a normal family, to escape the abuse. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of hope in being placed in the foster care system, but within a month of being in that first home together, my sister and I were separated, and I went to go live in a group home. Yeah, will you talk about that? Because I think, you know, many of us hear about you, the foster care system is at best a system, but there are lots of things that need fixing and reforming in it. I mean, at 13, you were emancipated by the time you were 18, but in that interim, you were in 12 different foster families. And that seems to be the norm. Why? Why do kids mm. get shuffled around like that? Yeah, there's so many different reasons. You know, I think I have to take responsibility as a youth. There were rules that I didn't follow. There were things that I should have done that I didn't. But then there were also foster parents who they said, okay, well, let's try a teenager. But when they got involved in foster care, they only wanted babies. And so maybe sticking to what you had planned originally. Um, and, you know, I think that when you go into the foster care system, you have to go in because you want to fill a gap. You want to fill a need. You can't go into the foster care system to fill or heal yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you would think that most people receiving a teenager into their house would recognize that there was going to be some bumpy road. You know, For kids in their own homes, there is a bumpy road. But you talk so candidly in the book about mistakes that you made, choices that, you know, looking back, if you could do it again, you would have done differently. But one of the things that you seem to have the grace to do throughout your life, which was so tumultuous, was to forgive people like to see mm -hmm. that there was a, a there was a reason in their own lives you had a reason in your life while you were act why you were acting out but they had a reason in their lives as well where did the grace for that come from so i was living in a group home and we had to do mandatory mandatory group counseling and I started to hear the girls stories and I realized that their stories reflect in mine their stories reflect in my mom's and I thought okay these girls are hurting they have these behaviors because someone has hurt them and I'm probably a lot like them and my mom is a lot like them and I think that allowed me to extend grace to understand that hurt people hurt people yeah. you know that we're not that those people the people who are hurtful aren't trying to be hurtful but yeah. someone has hurt them and so I think I was able to extend that forgiveness and I also, I was going to church at the time and I started to hear these messages about forgiveness and healing. And I wanted a part of that. I didn't know exactly the fullness mm -hmm. of what that meant, but I knew that I wanted to forgive because forgiveness is like, it's really like you have this key and you're, you're setting yourself free when you yes, forgive. Yes, we don't realize that often because mm -hmm. it's a hard choice to make. Um, in your last foster home, uh, you really found the Lord. Tell us about that. Uh, I came to my last foster home. Her name was Gigi. She was a single foster mom, and 
she was taking me to church every Sunday. We did devotions before bed. And she, I just felt she was very sacrificial. Some people say the things that she did were normal parent things. But for me, I never had a foster parent that sacrificed as much as she did that would take me to the track for to practice in the yeah. off season and that cared about me eating healthy food. Like she cared about those things that I cared about because I really wanted to be good at track. Yeah. And I think just her sacrificial giving heart drew me towards, because that's the heart of Jesus. Yeah. And I was like, I want to be like you, because I knew that I was a hurt person that hurt people, but I wanted to be a healed person that helped heal people. And I said, what do you have that I don't have? And she had Jesus. Wow. And was that uh, uh, an immediate transition for you in your life? I'd say I was very skeptical about faith, about God, because I could not understand if God was so good, then why have I endured the suffering? And why are there children that endure far worse suffering than I've endured? And so it was in continuing to go to church and understand that we are reflections of God and uh, God has called us to reflect the lives of Jesus. And in that, like Jesus suffered and his greatest glory was found in suffering. So that means that we're gonna suffer. And so it was really this, it, it was a journey of learning who God was and who he said I am. Yeah. Well, you really also had a gift in track that really helped to give you like a direction, a focus, and a track coach mm -hmm. who really powerfully impacted your life, really became like a dad to you. Tell us about him. Yeah, I had a track coach come into my life and he just started to encourage me. He was like, Tori, I think that you could go onto the state track meet and I think you could win it. I never even been to the state track meet individually. So I was like, this man's crazy and <laughs> we're just gonna do what he says. And if it doesn't work out, it's all his fault because this was his crazy idea. And we what was it about him that made you feel so connected to him and so um, so emotionally tied to him because he walked you down the aisle when you married eventually. Yeah, my track coach, um, he, he came into my life and he said, we want to welcome you into our family. Wow. And he became my father and my best friend really when I was in high school and that year went on to be a four-time state champion in track and field because wow. of his coaching and mentorship. And you, I want to say that you went on to Hillsdale College. I mean, you you did some hard things that really set you apart. You became Mrs. Universe. I mean, that was a, a, an unusual <laughs> added element. Healing is a process, and it's so evident in your book. Talk about that, because it's a hard one. Yeah, I don't think that I'll ever fully be healed until I'm eyes to eyes with Jesus. And I think that... That's just it. Like you have to continue to engage in the healing process, whether that's therapy or being in community. Being in community has really been one of the most healing things for me because I get to be a part of something where people encourage me and they tell me the truth about who I am. Yeah. You also talk in the book about the power of triggers. Mm. You know, the, I think that's true for everyone, but especially somebody who's gone through a wounded time in their lives. How do you handle those triggers when they come and hit you right in the heart mm -hmm. and take you back to a place of hurting? Yeah, well, usually I react poorly, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> but I look at my triggers as an invitation from God. It's, it's an invitation and he says, this is what I need to take care of for you. Yeah. This is what needs healed. And so I try to lean into that. Yeah, and what I will take care of for you. Those promises have mm -hmm. been so dominant in your life. Let's talk about the foster care system for a moment, because that is the subject of most of your book. How, how do we change it? How do we make it better? How do we make it a place for healing for kids? Yeah, there are so many things that need to be reformed in the foster care system, but I think something that we can all start with, like something that everybody can do, is that we can see the foster care system and the children in it differently. Because when we see those children not as troubled children, when we see them as God's children, we're gonna interact with them differently. We're gonna serve them and love them as God would love them. And that's gonna change the whole course of the system. You know, you really helped me because I have some children who were adopted older and who came from hard places. And you know, one of the things that really stood out to me in your story was that even after you came to Christ, there were things in your life that you continued to do out of your need and out of what had happened to you in, in your being wounded. We need to be more patient with each other, don't we? I think so. Yeah, and we just need to stick with one another. You know, we need to show each other that we're not going anywhere when things get hard. Yeah, 
And sometimes it's very hard for kids to verbalize, although you have a gift, my dear, <laughs> of being able to express yourself Aww. very clearly. But for most kids, they're so hurt, they're shut up in there. I really think that was the gift of starting therapy so young in that group home because it was mandatory. And so when I was young, like I had to learn how to process my emotions and they kept me in therapy my whole time in foster care. And I think that really helped me learn how to communicate. Well, I think your book is going to help a lot of people learn how to communicate with their children. You know, honestly, as I read it, I thought whether you are fostering, whether you have adopted a child or whether you're struggling with teenagers who are just in a hard place, you know, lots of times, like in your story, there were many times things happened to you that other people did not know about. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we need to take advantage to learn from you in what you shared here. And we wish you all of the best. I mean, you're doing some amazing things now. You're married. You have how many children? Oh, we have two biological children and an adopted son. And my sister that I was separated from now lives with me full time. How wonderful. God <laughs> is a redeemer. Yes, he is. He's Isn't so good. That great. Well, I highly recommend the book. It's a memoir. The title is Fostered. And we all need to read it because it's impacting families and individuals everywhere.